This chapter describes competitive advantage and explains how IT acts as an enabler of competitive advantage. It describes the limitations of technology-based competition and emphasizes the need for sustainable competitive advantage. The chapter discusses the value chain and the role of brand, scale, data, and switching cost assets, differentiation, network effects, and distribution channels. It attempts to describe the relationship between timing, technology, and the creation of resources for competitive advantage. The chapter also covers the five forces of competitive advantage. Management theorists, consultants, and practitioners often vehemently disagree on how firms should craft tech-enabled strategy, and many widely read articles contradict one another. As a manager, the ability to size up a firm's strategic position and understand its likelihood of sustainability is one of the most valuable and yet most difficult skills to master. Firms strive for sustainable competitive advantage, financial performance that consistently outperforms their industry peers. It is difficult to compete when everyone can copy technology and the competition is just a click away. Technological improvements can often be copied by rivals, leading to a profit-eroding arms race. Consistent winners are empowered through the use of their technology. According to Michael Porter, a professor at the Harvard Business School and father of the value chain and five forces concepts, the reason so many firms suffer aggressive margin eroding competition is because they've defined themselves according to operational effectiveness rather than strategic positioning. Operational effectiveness refers to performing the same tasks better than rivals perform them. Everyone wants to be better, but the danger in operational effectiveness is sameness. When offerings are roughly the same, they are more commodity than differentiated. Competition will focus on offering the lowest price, and this can pull down profits. The fast follower problem exists when rivals watch a pioneer's efforts, learn from their successes and missteps, then enter the market quickly with a comparable or superior product at a lower price. Over 175 mattress firms operate in a crowded space made popular with disruptive models by Casper, Purple, Lisa, Tuft & Needle, among others. CNBC states you can't tell them apart. Snapchat is considered the pioneer of many photo and video sharing features such as stories, location stickers, and augmented reality selfie filters. Augmented reality is technology that superimposes content such as images and animation on top of real-world images. Snapchat also incorporates Facebook properties, including Instagram and WhatsApp. Messenger and the flagship Facebook app routinely mimic Snap features, implementing some in as little as four months after their appearance in Snapchat. Snapchat's growth tumbled 82% after Instagram stories launched, and the firm posted a $2.2 billion loss in its first quarter as a public company. Operational effectiveness is critical, but for the most part, these efforts can be matched. Strategic positioning refers to performing different activities from those of rivals, or the same activities in a different way. Technology itself is often very easy to replicate, and those assuming advantage lies in technology alone may find themselves in a profit-eroding arms race with rivals able to match their moves step by step. Fresh Direct, the New York City-based grocery firm, focused on the two most pressing problems for Big Apple shoppers. Selection is limited and prices are high. The firm's storefront is a website offering a product mix heavy on fresh produce, as well as one-click menus and semi-prepared specials like meals in four minutes. Deliveries set out from a 400,000 square foot facility alongside corporate offices and R&D labs in the South Bronx. This kind of size allows Fresh Direct to offer a fresh goods selection that's over five times larger than local supermarkets. The Fresh Direct model crushes costs that plague traditional grocers. Worker shifts are highly efficient, avoiding the downtime lulls and busy rush hour spikes of storefronts and resulting in labor costs that are 60% lower than at traditional grocers. Fresh Direct buys and prepares what it sells, leading to less waste 
an advantage that the firm claims. Higher inventory turns mean the firm is selling product faster, so it collects money quicker than its rivals do. Fresh Direct's overall perishable inventory turns 197 times a year versus 40 times a year at traditional grocers. Fresh Direct's super fast farm to fork supply chain also allows food to be harvested for optimal freshness, yielding taste that far outpaces the competition. Artificial intelligence software, coupled with some seven miles of fiber optic cables linking systems and sensors, supports everything from baking the perfect baguette to verifying orders with 99.9% accuracy. Since it lacks the money-sucking open-air refrigerators of the competition, the firm even saves big on energy. Instead, staff bundle up for shifts in climate-controlled cold rooms tailored to the specific needs of dairy, deli, and produce. The firm also uses recycled biodiesel fuel to cut down on delivery costs. Fresh Direct buys directly from suppliers, eliminating middlemen whenever possible. The firm offers suppliers several benefits beyond traditional grocers, all in exchange for more. These include offering to carry a greater selection of supplier products while eliminating the slotting fees, fees paid by suppliers for prime shelf space that are common in traditional retail. Another benefit is co-branding products to help establish and strengthen supplier brand. Third, paying partners in days rather than weeks. And fourth, sharing data to help improve supplier sales and operations. Fresh Direct does it all with margins in the range of 20% to as high as 45% on many semi-prepared meals, easily dwarfing the razor-thin 1% margins earned by traditional grocers. Traditional grocers can't fully copy the firm's delivery business because this would leave them straddling two markets, low margin storefront and high margin delivery, unable to gain optimal benefits from either. A firm is said to be straddling when it attempts to match the benefits of a successful position while maintaining its existing position. Injury costs for would-be competitors are also high and the firm's complex and high customized software which handles everything from delivery scheduling to orchestrating the preparation of thousands of recipes continues to be refined and improved each year. On top of all this comes years of relationship building with suppliers as well as customer data used to further refine processes, speed reorders, and make helpful recommendations. The Fresh Direct model is superior to conventional grocery stores in just about every way and the firm has devastated the competition while delivering on quality selection and value. However, one threat successful firms face is the potential entry of even better funded, growth-seeking rivals to try to squeeze them out of the current market. Amazon has recently shown up in Fresh Direct's backyard, buying a massive North New Jersey distribution center formerly owned by grocer Pathmark. Estimates suggest the facility may be able to move 10 times the dollar volume of Fresh Direct's new Bronx distribution center. Many delivery items are cheaper from Amazon Fresh than from Fresh Direct. Other players in the market include Walmart and Kroger, as well as Uber-style contract food delivery services like Instacart, Google Express, and meal kit delivery firms like Blue Apron. Although Amazon Fresh garnered negative early reviews for a poor online shopping experience and an uneven selection, these are problems a well-funded and patient giant may be able to iron out over time. The resource-based view of competitive advantage approaches idea is that if a firm is to maintain sustainable competitive advantage, a firm must control a set of exploitable resources that have four critical characteristics, valuable, rare, imperfectly imitable, and non-substitutable. Resource-based thinking can help firms avoid the trap of carelessly entering markets simply because growth is spotted. The telecommunications industry learned this lesson in a very hard and painful way. Most of what travels over the internet is transferred over long-haul fiber optic cables, so telecom firms began digging up the ground and laying webs of fiberglass to meet the growing demand. On top of that, a technology called Dense Wave Division Multiplexing, or DWDM, enabled existing fiber to carry more transmissions than ever before. 
In dense wave division multiplexing, the light inside fiber is split into different signal carrying wavelengths in a way similar to how a prism splits light into different colors. Recognizing a resource doesn't mean a firm will be able to acquire it or exploit it forever. But being aware of major sources of competitive advantage can help managers recognize an organization's opportunities and vulnerabilities and can help them brainstorm winning strategies. The set of activities through which a product or service is created and delivered to customers is known as a value chain. Firms that craft an imitation resistant value chain have developed a way of doing business that others will struggle to replicate. And in nearly every successful effort of this kind, technology plays a key enabling role. The value chain is the set of interrelated activities that bring products or services to market. The value chain is a set of activities through which a product or service is created and delivered to customers. There are five primary components and four supporting components. The primary components are inbound logistics, and as you can imagine, this means getting in the raw materials and other resources such as human capital. Operations, this is manufacturing or fabrication or the services being provided. Outbound logistics, which means pushing the product out the door. Marketing and sales, which means pushing it to customers, and support, which means maintaining the product after it is sold. These primary activities are supported by secondary components of the value chain. These are firm infrastructure, human resources management, technology and research and development, procurement, legal, and others. Dell, previously the world's number one PC manufacturer, has seen its market share shrink because of rivals copying its value chain and reducing the price advantage it enjoyed over rivals. For years, Dell's super efficient, vertically integrated manufacturing and direct to customer sales combined to help the firm earn seven times more profit on its own systems when compared with comparably configured rival PCs. While Dell sold direct to consumers, rivals had to share a cut of sales with the less efficient retail chains responsible for the majority of their sales. But then Dell's killer model, one that had become a staple case study in business schools worldwide, began to lose steam. Nearly two decades of observing Dell had allowed the contract manufacturers serving Dell's rivals to improve manufacturing efficiency. As the cost of computing fell, the price advantage Dell enjoyed over rivals also shrank in absolute terms. The direct-to-consumer model also suffered when sales of notebook PCs outpaced the more commoditized desktop market. Customers often want to compare products in person before making a purchase decision. The firm has fallen on such hard times that management has taken the firm private, a plan that would allow a turnaround team to buy up all of Dell's publicly traded stock. Dell struggles as computers, customers, and the product mix changed all underscore the importance of continually assessing a firm's strategic position among changing market conditions. There is no guarantee that today's winning strategy will dominate forever with a reminder that the advantages that were sustainable for years in earlier competition might not line up with market realities and the competitive environment going forward. A firm's brand is the symbolic embodiment of all the information connected with a product or service. A strong brand can be an exceptionally powerful resource for competitive advantage by lowering search costs, proxying quality, and inspiring trust. Consumers use brands to lower search costs. So having a strong brand is particularly vital for firms hoping to be the first online stop for consumers. A strong brand proxies quality and inspires trust. So if consumers can't rely on a firm to deliver as promised, they'll go elsewhere. As an upside, tech can play a critical role in rapidly and cost-effectively strengthening a brand. If a firm performs well, consumers can often be enlisted to promote a product or service. Leveraging consumers to promote a product or service is known as viral marketing. With the rise of social media, services like Facebook and Twitter have become rival marketing machines. Early customer accolades for a novel service often mean that positive press, a kind of free advertising, will also likely follow. But if a firm shows up late, it may end up paying much more to counter an incumbent's place in the consumer psyche. Advantages related to a firm's size are referred to as scale advantages. 
Businesses benefit from economies of scale when the cost of an investment can be spread across increasing units of production or in serving a growing customer base. Firms that benefit from scale economies as they grow are sometimes referred to as being scalable. The internet firm Blue Nile sold as many diamond rings with just 115 employees and one website as a traditional jewelry retailer would sell through 116 stores. With lower operating costs, Blue Nile can sell at prices that brick and mortar stores can't match, attracting even more customers and further fueling its advantages in economies of scale. Profit margins improve as the cost to run the firm's single website and operate its one warehouse are spread across increasing jewelry sales. A growing firm may also gain bargaining power with its suppliers or buyers. The scale of technology investment required to run a business can also act as a barrier to entry, discouraging new smaller competitors. Intel's size allows the firm to pioneer cutting-edge manufacturing techniques and invest $7 billion on next-generation plants. Rivals such as AMD and IBM once made their own chips, but sold off manufacturing when their smaller market shares couldn't justify the Intel-sized multi-billion dollar table stakes needed to play in the game. Netscape, which once controlled more than 80% of the market share in web browsers, lost its dominant position when customers migrated to Internet Explorer. Microsoft's web browser, Internet Explorer, was easy to install and had no significant differences in terms of usability. This example serves to illustrate that firms with low switching costs can sometimes be rapidly overtaken by strong rivals with additional competitive advantages. Switching costs exist when customers incur an expense to move from one product or service to another. Tech firms often benefit from strong switching costs that cement customers to their firms. Similarly, firms that seem dominant but that don't have high switching costs can be rapidly trumped by strong rivals. It is critical for challengers to realize that in order to win customers away from a rival, a new entrant must not only demonstrate to consumers that an offering provides more value than the incumbent, they have to ensure that their value added exceeds the incumbent's value plus any perceived customer switching costs. Sources of switching costs include learning costs, information and data, search costs, and loyalty programs. Data can be a particularly strong switching cost for firms leveraging technology. Fueled by scale over time, firms that have more customers and have been in business longer can gather more data, and many can use this data to improve their value chain by offering more accurate demand forecasting or product recommendations. Commodities are products or services that are nearly identical offered from multiple vendors. Consumers buying commodities are highly price focused since they have so many similar choices. In order to break the commodity trap, many firms leverage technology to differentiate their goods and services. Data is not only a switching cost, it also plays a crucial role in differentiation. Each time a visitor returns to Amazon, the firm uses browsing records, purchase patterns, and product ratings to present a custom home page featuring products that the firm hopes the visitor will like. Apple is another firm that has distinguished itself through differentiation. Unlike rival offerings from Microsoft and Google, Apple Mobile and computer operating systems only run on Apple hardware. This allows the firm to tightly integrate the experiences across Apple products. While Apple's market share in computer operating systems is less than Microsoft Windows, and Apple's worldwide smartphone market share is less than Google's Android, Apple's differentiation and the ability to avoid price eroding commodity-based competition of other hardware rivals has helped make Tim Cook's firm the most profitable company in the United States. Network effects, sometimes called network externalities or Metcalfe's law, exist when a product or service becomes more valuable as more people use it. Metcalfe's law is said to be at play when the value of a product or service increases as its number of users expands. A firm with a big network of users might also see value added by third parties. Switching costs also play a role in determining the strength of network effects. Because no one wants to be stranded 
with an abandoned product and lose its additional investment, users may choose a technically inferior product simply because the product has a larger user base and is perceived as having a greater chance of being offered in the future. By getting in between restaurants and their customers and adding value along the way, Open Table has built the world's largest online restaurant reservation system, one so dominant it is effectively a monopoly. Open Table can get you a reservation at over 32,000 restaurants worldwide. As recently as 2013, its largest U.S. rival had only 1,000. The system delivers high value by exposing inventory, lowering search costs, and reducing frustration. Distribution channels are the path through which products or services get to customers and can be critical to a firm's success. Firms offering highly differentiated offerings may face difficulty convincing potential customers of a product's unfamiliar benefits. Apple has exploited distribution channels in a number of ways. Apple trumped Google to become the dominant mapping platform in iOS. The company's control of iOS gave it command over the distribution channel to reach its users, kicking Google out as the default mapping app and capturing the majority of user engagement. Apple Gear at Best Buy might face price or simple feature checklist comparisons. However, Apple products offered at the Apple Store give firm trained employees an opportunity to present advantages of the company's unique products, how they work together, and offer free on-site customer support. More recently, Apple has leveraged its iTunes platform as a distribution channel to launch a new subscription service. Just nine months after launching the Apple Music, the firm had attracted over 13 million paying subscribers to its streaming service. Today, Apple has over 60 million subscribers worldwide, and while Spotify has more subscribers overall, Apple Music has overtaken its Swedish rival in the United States. Many firms offer application programming interfaces, or APIs, essentially programming hooks that allow other firms to tap into their services. By publishing APIs, Uber has managed to add its service to apps and websites provided by United Airlines, OpenTable, and TripAdvisor. Users can be recruited to create new distribution channels for a firm's products and services. Amazon now has over 1 million of these associates, the term the firm uses for its affiliates. Yet it only pays them if a promotion gains a sale. Google similarly receives some 30% of its ad revenue, not from search ads, but from advertisements distributed within third-party sites ranging from lowly blogs to the New York Times. Being dependent on distribution channels provided by other firms can present challenges if distribution partners suddenly decide to cut you off. The ability to distribute products by bundling them with existing offerings can be a key advantage. In the United States, technology and even business models can be patented typically for periods of 20 years from the date of patent application. Firms that receive patents have some degree of protection from copycats that try to identically mimic their products and methods. The patent system is often considered to be unfairly stacked against startups because high litigation costs, coupled with a few months of litigation, can sink an early stage firm. Large firms can also be victims. Non-practicing entities, or NPEs, more commonly known as patent trolls, hold intellectual property not with the goal of bringing novel innovations to market, but instead in hopes that they can sue or extort large settlements from others. Litigation threats are pushing rivals to cooperate in patent portfolio acquisition. Even if an innovation is patentable, that doesn't mean that a firm has bulletproof protection. Some patents have been nullified by the courts upon later review. Software patents are also widely granted, but notoriously difficult to defend. In many cases, coders at competing firms can write substitute algorithms that aren't the same, but accomplish similar tasks. Some have correctly argued that the barriers to entry for many tech-centric businesses are low. Today's internet giants are winners because in most cases, they were the first to move with a profitable model and they were able to quickly establish resources for competitive advantage. In a year in which Netflix profits were up sevenfold, Blockbuster lost more than $1 billion and today's Blockbuster is bankrupt. By 2018, Netflix briefly surpassed Disney in market capitalization. In the first three months of 2018, eBay made nearly half a billion dollars in profits, 
while Sotheby's lost $6.5 million and has since been taken private. In 2018, Amazon's profits totaled over $11.2 billion, while Barnes & Noble lost over $152 million and is now no longer a publicly traded company. Timing and technology alone will not yield sustainable competitive advantage, yet both of these can be enablers for competitive advantage. True strategic positioning means that a firm has created differences that cannot be easily matched by rivals. Moving first pays off when the time lead is used to create critical resources for competitive advantage, resources that are valuable, rare, tough to imitate, and lack substitutes. Many telecom firms began digging up the ground and laying webs of fiberglass to meet the growing demand for internet connectivity. However, rivals and startups began to imitate these firms, and soon these new assets were not so rare, and each day they seemed to be less valuable. This example shows that resource-based thinking can help avoid the trap of carelessly entering markets simply because growth is spotted. Firms like Blockbuster, Sotheby's, and Barnes & Noble were put at risk by operating under Follow, Don't Lead. Yahoo and Hotmail were able to hold on to their lead in email market share for several years after Gmail's introduction, likely because these firms quickly matched and nullified Gmail's most significant tech-based innovation, which is more free storage, before Google could inflict real damage. Yahoo and many Wall Street analysts saw Search as a commodity, a service the firm had subcontracted out to other firms including AltaVista and Inktomi. As Google's innovations in technology and interface remained unmatched over time, this allowed the firm to build its brand, scale, and advertising network distribution channel that grew from network effects because content providers and advertisers attract one another. Now, Google and Apple, too, are once again running from this playbook, turning the smartphone software market into what increasingly looks like a two-horse race. Google's ability to succeed after being late to the search in mobile isn't a sign of the power of the late mover. It's a story about the failure of incumbents to monitor their competitive landscape, realize new rivals, and react to challenging offerings. Firms that quickly get to market with the right model can dominate, but it's equally critical for leading firms to pay close attention to competition and innovate in ways that consumers value. Strategic frameworks help managers describe the competitive environment a firm is facing. According to Porter, strategy is fundamentally about being different. Frameworks can also be used as brainstorming tools to generate new ideas for responding to industry competition. One of the most popular frameworks for examining a firm's competitive environment is Porter's Five Forces, also known as the Industry and Competitive Analysis Framework. The five forces this framework considers are the intensity of rivalry among existing competitors, the threat of new entrants, the threat of substitute goods or services, and the bargaining power of buyers, and finally, the bargaining power of suppliers. Conceptually, an example is the bargaining power of buyers, where greater choice gives buyers more bargaining power. On the other hand, suppliers gain more power when there are fewer of them. For example, Apple's dominance of smartphone and tablet markets has allowed the firm to lock up 60% of the world's supply of advanced touchscreen displays, and to do so with better pricing than would be available to smaller rivals. This is an example of a growing firm gaining bargaining power with its suppliers. Sometimes technology can sound geek and so technical that executives might think that it doesn't require managerial or investor attention. However, many investing in the telecom sector suffered from a lack of insight on how a key technology was impacting their industry. Telecom firms failed to anticipate the impact of a technology known as open source software which enabled existing fiber to carry more transmissions than ever before. Consider how the rise of the internet has impacted the five forces for music retailers. Traditional music retailers scrambled to invest in selling music online out of what is perceived to be a necessity. Their intensity of rivalry increases because they not only compete based on the geography of where brick and mortar stores are physically located, they now compete online as well. Investments online are expensive and uncertain, prompting some firms to partner with new entrants such as Amazon. Customers can hear samples of almost all tracks. Selection is seemingly limitless, 
the long tail phenomenon, and data is leveraged using collaborative filtering software to make product recommendations and assist in music discovery. The process of buying a plastic disc now faces substitutes as digital music files become available on commercial music sites. From a sound quality perspective, the substitute good of digital tracks purchased online is almost always inferior to their CD counterparts. Consumers, buyers, have bargaining power. They demand cheaper prices and greater convenience. The internet can also create models that strengthen the bargaining power of suppliers. Consider the rise of taxi services such as Uber. While it can be useful to look at changes in one industry as a model for potential change in another, it's important to realize that the changes that impact one industry do not necessarily impact the other industries in the same way. It is often suggested that the internet increases bargaining power of buyers and lowers the bargaining power of suppliers. This suggestion is true for some industries like auto sales and jewelry where the products are commodities and the price transparency enhanced by the internet counteracts a previous information asymmetry where customers often don't know enough information about a product to bargain effectively. The degree to which complete information is available is known as price transparency. But it's not true across the board. In cases where network effects are strong, or a seller's goods are highly differentiated, the internet can strengthen supplier bargaining power. Switching costs weaken buyer bargaining power. Switching costs help cement customers to the company, even when rivals offer more compelling rates or services. Tech plays a significant role in shaping and reshaping the five forces, but it's not the only significant force that can create an industry shock. Government deregulation or intervention, political shock, and social and demographic changes can all play a role in altering the competitive landscape. That's the end of chapter two. Thank you.